Hello, my name is Talia Eisen, and I'd like to welcome you to this community session regarding the Board of Supervisors five-year strategic plan. This session is meant to provide a forum for your input and suggestions about the strategic plan. The Board of Supervisors and Sonoma County leaders are making an extensive effort to gain perspectives from the community in order to enrich the plan and ensure that all voices are heard before the plan is finalized. Just a note that we will be repeating this session in Spanish this evening at 6 p.m. Esta sesión se repitará esta noche a las seis en español. We have with us today Catherine de Pasqua, Paul Gullickson, excuse me, and Melissa Valle. And we will have Alegria de la Cruz as well with us to answer some questions. Um, Great, we look forward to hearing your thoughts, questions, ideas, concerns, et cetera, during this session. Just to let you know, there are several ways you'll be able to participate today. First, we will be using the polling feature in Zoom to ask you to prioritize objectives listed in each goal area. And we'll be covering four goal areas. And I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment. But if you're using Zoom, you'll be able to see those polls. We'll also give you a chance to make suggestions or ask questions using the question and answer feature of Zoom. You may enter questions using that Q&A icon that you see here. If you see a comment in Q&A that you like, click on the thumbs up icon so we can see how many people also like that idea. We're also monitoring Facebook Live. So if you're watching that way, feel free to submit questions there as well. For those of you on the phone, you can email your thoughts and questions at strategicplanning at sonomacounty.org. And you can also contact us later there uh, through that same email if you wish, if you have more thoughts or ideas later. We may have children uh, present. We'll have people of all ages at this session. So we're gonna ask you to just please use respectful language. And finally, uh, we do expect a lot of comments today. So we may not be able to get to all of them. However, all comments and inputs that are submitted in the Q&A or email will be saved and included in the report that's going back to the Board of Supervisors. Finally, you may also send us additional ideas through our online survey, which is open now through December 11. Okay. Little bit about the strategic plan. So since late 2019, county leaders and board members have been engaged in developing a base framework for this plan. And we'll look a little bit at how this strategic plan is structured. As you see from this triangle here, a strategic plan begins with examining the mission, the vision, the values, and this helps orient where that uh, plan will go. From there, uh, several pillars or focal areas may be developed, what we call strategic pillars. And today, as you know, we are looking at the pillar of racial equity and social justice. Underneath each pillar, we will have several goals and objectives that support uh, that focus area. Okay, so that's the general structure. The Board of Supervisors have identified strategic pillars for this plan, and those are healthy and safe communities, racial equity and social justice, organizational excellence, climate action and resiliency, and finally, resilient infrastructure. Okay, great. So for each pillar, as I said, there are several uh, goals that will have been identified. And for each goal, there are several objectives. Goals are the outcomes that we want to achieve, the destination, if you will. Objectives are the measure of the progress needed to achieve that goal. 
So how we're gonna get there, okay? Some goals and objectives have intersections with other pillars. Intersections are noted with a symbol for each pillar. And this legend shows what pillar each symbol represents. So let me have a look at that with you. As you can see, healthy and safe communities is represented by a little house, racial equity and social justice by the shaking hands, organizational excellence by this kind of edifice, uh, climate action and resiliency by the earth and resilient infrastructure with the hammer. So you may see some of these symbols show up as we go through the, um, the information today. And that just indicates where a um, intersection lies with another pillar um, in the plan. Soon I will be sharing with you the goals and objectives for the pillar of today, racial equity and social justice. And I'll pause at each section to take your questions along the way uh, in each goal area. Okay. The purpose of community engagement. We've asked you here to get your input. We wanna hear from you. We will have opportunity for you to submit those questions. And the reason is we wanna gather input and reactions on this draft strategic plan before it's finalized. It is in development at this time. We wanna discover additional goals or objectives for consideration. So if there's something you think of or see that you think should be included, uh, this is a, a great chance to voice that. And we want to understand which of the objectives that we share today are highest priority for you as community members. So that helps us understand uh, where the priority and interest is as well. And again, that will be represented with some polling that will happen. All right, so meanwhile, I wanna let you know that all the feedback entered today in these various ways will be collected and posted online and included in the final report to the Board of Supervisors. And your input will be anonymous. We do have lots to cover, so let's begin. So for today, racial equity and social justice, looking forward to uh, sharing this with you. All right, I will read each section covering a goal such as this one and the objectives underneath. And then we'll turn to your questions and input. So remember, you can submit your input online in the Zoom Q&A or on Facebook, all right? So I'm gonna begin and go through our first uh, goal area. Again, the pillar today, racial equity and social justice, which is, means in this context, achieve racial equity in county service provision and ensure a workforce reflective of the community we serve, okay? Goal number one, foster a county organizational culture that supports the commitment to achieving racial equity. Objective number one, develop a shared understanding of key racial equity concepts across the county and its leadership. Two, Conduct a baseline assessment of racial equity awareness and understanding among county staff and develop a process to assess progress annually. Three, establish an ongoing racial equity learning program for employees. And four, establish equity focused work groups to advance equity initiatives across all departments in collaboration with the Office of Equity. All right, so those are the objective areas uh, underneath this first goal. And we do have uh, um, the opportunity now to look at your questions. I'm gonna um, turn to those at this time. I wanted, I see we have Alegria with us and I wanted to just see as we're collecting those questions, Alegria, if you have anything you'd like to say about this goal area briefly, just to give us some context or, or your thoughts on this. Thanks, Talia. There we go. Um, I think this is a, 
this this goal is really about kind of focusing inwards and making sure that we are doing a deep dive and looking at our ability um, to to really understand the work that's in front of us, um, to really look honestly um, at the insides of our systems and our structures, and to make sure that we are understanding the work that we have in front of us. Um, so there's a you know focus on training. There's a focus on um, really supporting this this work throughout the county as a whole and creating a center of it. Um, let's see one of the questions here. Christelle asks, can you say more about the Office of Equity? Will it be involved with all four objectives and not only objective four? Um, Christelle, that's a great question. And the answer is yes, right? We are, we are really seeing the Office of Equity as being kind of the center and the driver working with people throughout the county of a whole, as a whole um, who are coming in to the work to share it with us as uh, core team members. Um, ah, thanks, Christelle. These are questions that are coming in from the public. Um, and um, so the, the, the goal is to make sure that we have kind of folks in each department of the county who have um, done some additional and some deeper level training to drive the work uh, internally in each of the departments. Um, so that, and that they would have kind of a, a second home outside of their department in the Office of Equity that would really be kind of coordinating and making sure that, um, that this work has a, has a substantive center to it. Great, thank you, Alegria, that's perfect. It's really helpful. I do see we have a couple of other questions here. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, here's one that says, how can the county do a better job of creating a more equitable and diverse organizational culture through hiring? And I believe we will be looking at that subsequently in some of the other areas, but perhaps you have a, a brief response for that for the moment, um, Alegria. Sure. Um, it's a great question. It's something that we are well aware that needs to be centrally um, located in these and these goals and objectives moving forward is looking at our hiring, um, but really starting from the, the point of recruitment um, and moving into the hiring process um, and then also into retention and promotional opportunities. So we're really seeing this as a um, you know, as a continuum and making sure that we understand the continuum that starts from the recruitment process all the way to ensuring that we're retaining and, and promoting people um, with a lens and an eye towards racial equity. Um, one of the things that the Office of Equity is doing right now is really partnering with the Department of Human Resources um, to, to ensure that, uh, that all departments have access to good resources about how to make sure that those recruitments are being done on a much broader level um, that even the way that we're articulating kind of the skills that are required to be a successful public servant at the County of Sonoma include the ability to be culturally responsive in your service provision that include, you know, highlighting and elevating um, the benefits of being bilingual, of trilingual, being bicultural. Um, and so that we're really kind of creating some additional spaces and some ways to really see these as values, um, as assets that people come into the county bringing with them. Um, so we're really kind of working at this uh, understanding, you know, that we're grounded in understanding that these are assets and not just necessarily diversity um, and that the county could benefit uh, from really articulating those those skill sets uh, from a culturally responsive perspective as assets to really increase the, the success and service provision. Thank you. Wonderful. Good. And I'm hoping we'll be going into that a bit more in a moment. I do see a comment here that came in that I want to share. It says, it's my considered opinion that a primary foundation for racial equity must be based on improving law enforcement, which unfairly targets people of color with implicit bias, excessive use of force and wrongful deaths. It's the, uh, it's the only way that trust will ever grow and do you agree? Great input. We really appreciate the comment and like all of these, they will be uh, referred back, of course, uh, with this entire report. So thank you for the thought. Um, here's another one. I want to go to another question. Um, Alegria, you mentioned that there will be someone in each department whose role it will be, uh, will be a conduit between the Office of Equity and the departments. Who are those people and how are they chosen? That's a great question, Andrea. Um, so one of the things that we are really working on in the Office of Equity is that the office is also walking its talk when it comes to open and transparent processes that are available and that are making sure that we're targeting, you know, specific folks with an interest and with additional um, 
kind of lived experiences and as well as a dedication to learning um, new experiences in the in the context of being public servants. Um, and so uh, we are currently working right now on the application process for people to be considered um, for core team membership. Um, we're working um, really building on you know the excellent work that um, folks who have gone through a couple of years of training through the Government Alliance for Race and Equity um, and taking a lot of those best practices that those folks learned in the context of doing those trainings to then implement them here in the County of Sonoma. And one of, one of those good suggestions is just how critical it is to have a good kind of open um, process and very clear criteria about the kinds of skill sets that would be required to, uh, to be members of the, of the core team for the Office of Equity. That's wonderful. Thank you. And I do see another comment here. Again, you know, there's a lot coming in. We have a limited time today, so we will keep moving <laughs> forward, but I want to share one more comment here. And, uh, and this says, congrats on making this forum open so people can comment, because sometimes reality is not always so. But thanks a lot for making it so. And we really appreciate that, of course. We do want to hear from you. We want to hear from it. Uh, everyone who's interested in being part of this process and truly it enriches this plan so much to have the community's voice. So, uh, so it's, it's a very positive thing that you're all attending today. Thank you. There's one more here that I'll, I'll look at before we have to move on to the next thing. Um, I'm gonna share this one. Prior to recruitment is the development of a workforce with the needed skills. What will the county do to engage in this part of the process? It's a great question, Gina. Um, you know, I think this really speaks to the need for some collaborative partnerships with organizations throughout our community that do this really well. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking right now about, you know, how the Office of Equity would be engaged with that in a deeper way. And um, that feels really central to some of the, the bigger picture planning work um, the power analysis that would um, that would need to, to come into the development of how we would um, even expand the continuum further beyond recruitment into kind of skill development. So Gina, I'd love to talk with you more about that if you have good ideas. Great, wonderful. There is, I, I'm going to go to our poll in a moment, but I want to just share that someone asks if there will be an opportunity for county employees to give feedback. We do have, as I was sharing in the beginning, a uh, survey and some other ways to for uh, everyone to continue to give input and thoughts. And there are county employee sessions being held as well where people have that opportunity. So absolutely, this is continuing to be a very open process and um, and lots of ways to, to give feedback, feedback and input. And I will go over those again before we finish today. Uh, meanwhile, I think we have to, for time's sake, keep moving. Please know that there are more questions coming in and these will be saved and forward. Your comments and questions will not be lost. Let's look at the poll because I wanna ask you to tell us through this poll, which of these objectives you feel is the highest priority. If you can select your top two, what you feel is most important to focus on. And we'll take a moment for you to do that. And as you're doing that, I also wanna remind you this session will repeat tonight in Spanish uh, at 6 p.m. So if you know people who might want to participate in that and can share that information, if you would like to uh, be there as well, uh, that was another opportunity. So for goal number one, which are the two objectives that you would prioritize? Let's give it a few more seconds if you haven't selected. And then we will close that poll and see what the results are. Great, so we have 81% of you with the top uh, uh, priority being establish equity focused work groups to advance equity initiatives across all departments in collaboration with the Office of Equity and Equity Officer. 50 56%, so in second place was objective number two, is conduct a baseline assessment of racial equity awareness and understanding among county staff. Uh, great. 
So that's really helpful information for us to hear that. Um, very useful in this process as things develop. Thank you. Let's look at the next goal area. Great, so goal number two, I will read this and we will continue with our question and answer. Goal two, implement strategies to make the county workforce reflect county demographics across all levels. So objective number one, identify opportunities to enhance recruitment, hiring, employee development, and promotional processes to reflect the value of having the perspectives of people of color represented at all levels in the county workforce. Objective two, begin implementing strategies to recruit, hire, develop, promote, retain county employees of color, produce annual report card assessing progress, and update strategies as needed. So um, again, uh, <clears throat> these are the, uh, the goals, uh, and the goal and the objectives. Some of you have started uh, asking about some of these pieces. So we have, we see that they do appear in the plan. Before we go on, I, I wanna hear from Alegria a moment if you have any thoughts on this before we go to the questions. But I do see that someone has asked again about the information for tonight's session. Tonight, um, uh, se repitará esta sesión en español a las seis de la noche. Y um, bienvenidos a todos que quieren participar esta noche. Otra vez es a las seis. If you want to come at six o'clock, it will be a Spanish language repeat of this session, the same information and an opportunity to participate uh, with me in Spanish. All right, Alegria, do you have uh, anything you'd like to say about this before we turn to questions? Um, no, I think we, we kind of touched on this with goal one, um, but recognizing that this is really kind of a deeper dive into the internal workings of how we ensure that our workforce is reflective. Um, and when we say workforce, I, I wanna be clear that we're talking about workforce at all levels. So we do have a relatively diverse force. Um, right now, we have the majority of uh, kind of people of color um, really in lower lower situated positions. And so we wanna make sure that our, our leaderful positions are also reflective of the communities that we serve. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, somebody asked, what are the significant differences between objective one and two? So identifying opportunities as opposed to being uh, begin implementing is one theoretical, two more practical? What is the nuance there? Yeah, I think um, it's a great question. So objective one, the way that we're understanding this is really about the process that it takes to, um, to do some resetting of our, our processes and our, and our um, practices um, and making sure that as we do that resetting and we do that um, you know, taking in the information that we need to have, that it's also done with an equity lens, that we're doing some equity designing in the process of identifying those opportunities. And that objective two is, is much more about making sure that we're holding ourselves accountable to mm -hmm. the brainstorming that we had <clears throat> with, um, with the completion of objective one. Question. Wonderful, thank you. So I'm gonna read this comment and question. To foster such an organizational culture, it would be basic that equal language access be provided for all county residents who may access county services, programs, et cetera. This need has been evident for years and repeatedly brought to the attention of county leaders. Will the county now finally make the commitment to make this a reality? All right, thank you for that thought, that question. Alegria, do you have any info on that? Yes, I'm really excited to say that one of the and the first big projects of the Office of Equity was to um, do some high level surveys, um, some financial analysis and to uh, develop a recommended uh, protocol and policy for um, language access and language justice at the County of Sonoma. Um, I think we have heard loud and clear the concern and many of us staff have experienced the frustration of not having things be clear uh, across the county as a whole. Um, when it comes to you know, how and when and, um, and frankly why we need to make sure that we are providing um, not only access but um, to also create a culture of belonging for people who are not um, English speakers um, as, as kind of their primary, their primary language. And so um, really excited, hopefully that, uh, that work will come to the board um, in, uh, in late January um, so keep your eyes peeled. We are in the process right now of engaging in some community 
um, consultation around uh, the contents of that policy. So if you are interested in checking in with us, um, please make sure that you reach out to equity at sonoma-county.org. Um, that's our email address. And if you want to do um, some talking with us about how a language access and language justice policy and protocol should be um, designed, please know that we're here and, and want to hear from you. Thank you. So I have uh, another question here. Will county employees be able to give anonymous feedback about how objectives are going over time? And I do wanna remind you there's uh, ongoing uh, input email line certainly. And that's just a great question. I, um, I don't know if there are uh, mechanisms for that over time as the plan unfolds over five years. Um, I don't, perhaps you can share that with us, Alegria, if there's some information on that. The second, yeah, yeah go ahead. That's a, that's a very good question. I hadn't considered kind of anonymous feedback as being necessary, but I do think that that's important. Um, I would say that, um, you know, there are a couple of things that are happening currently at the County of Sonoma that I think are really making opportunities for deeper conversation and for conversations that um, might not have happened as easily in the past. Um, one of them is the creation of kind of affinity groups, right, of folks who are organizing themselves around the ways in which they identify themselves. So one, one of the county's first affinity groups has popped up um, in the form of SoCo Learn, the Latinx Employee Resource Network, um, which provides a safe space for folks to come in and have conversations grounded in kind of, you know, situations that they are finding themselves with regards to their identities and how those identities are showing up at the county or not. Um, and so I, I think that, you know, efforts like affinity group creation really make sure that we that we're creating, again, senses of culture that uh, allow for kind of belonging um, and, and inclusion of, of voices that may not have been um, able to be heard in quite the same way that we're doing that 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 enable that when when those doors are starting to be open when those those new places are created. So I'm excited about that. And and know that you know if in fact there needs to be anonymous feedback again equity at sonoma-county.org let's 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 have the conversation however is best and, and most comfortable for people wonderful there are several questions here let's see if we can get to these how will this be measured if a certain demographic represents a percent of county population um, does that mean that your objective will be that percent so um, uh, the commentator says, I would advocate for different or additional measures to emphasize the value of diversity and perhaps even go beyond those demographic numbers as a single measure or minimum benchmark. Um, comment or thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, love, I love that frame. I mean, I think that, you know, equity is, is never about quotas, right? It's never about saying like, oh, we've met this percentage, we're gonna check the box and walk away because we recognize when we're, when we're working in an equity lens that, you know, there's going to be times where, you know, you're a minority voice and that may mean that you are marginalized from the conversation and then equity really provides an opportunity for us to say, we're actually going to design, we're going to design to the margins because the margins are created by us. Um, and so if, if the margins are created by us, by, you know, the percentage, the use of percentages or the understandings of how we show up in our, in our community, then by designing to the margins, we're necessarily kind of pulling folks into the center and doing away with the need for thinking about things from such a um, such a numbers based approach. At the same time, it's really critical for us to be able to use those benchmarks to hold us accountable and to recognize, you know, and to give us some ability to see those areas that need additional attention, um, mm -hmm. some additional care and some and some love and some and some creative thinking. So um, have we already identified areas where the county has barriers in place. Um, mm -hmm. So no, we are, we are in startup mode at the county of it in the, in the kind of office of equity. So, um, and we've got 2.2 people on staff and we're actually in the process of, of doing the important work that was identified in objective one um, or goal one, objective four, uh, which is organizing folks in each of the departments to do some of this work with us. So um, I'm really excited that um, that was identified as one of the highest areas of focus and um, of interest because that's exactly what we're doing right now. So hopefully when we get all those folks kind of muscled up and ready to go and feeling like they're part of team equity, um, a lot of that work will then happen to make sure that we're driving, you know, in, in that lane together around 
what are those areas that need loving attention? Um, how can we can we you know really be um, clear and focused about you know the ways in which we're targeting? I love renovation. That's such a good word for renovation. Yes. <laughs> All right, that's so helpful. Thank you, Alegria. I do want to turn to our poll and unfortunately have to move us along. There's a, a lot of good comments coming in here. Um, as we get that poll ready, I am going to just share a couple of comments. Uh, I think counties should focus not just on hiring more people of color, but local people of color. Great comment. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what about the people that have grown up here and are part of the community? Good point. And we are going to submit all these uh, comments. So um, another one here, would like to see more Latino people in high positions in Sonoma County, since Sonoma is very diverse. Great, we really appreciate the input. And we want you to turn now, if you see the poll, if you have that uh, through Zoom, just let us know out of these two objectives, which one you would prioritize. Um, select the top one. So we, again, have a sense of community priorities. Uh, great inputs today, this is really helpful. Just a few more seconds here if you haven't selected something with your top uh, priority. And let's see the results. All right, well, 78% chose objective two, begin implementing strategies to recruit, hire, develop, promote, and retain county employees of color and produce annual report card assessing progress. Um, and updating strategies as needed. This is where your input is so helpful. Wonderful, thank you for that. It's good to have that information. That poll is really useful. Again, this is a work in progress. It's been purposefully paused here to get input from the community. So um, that's why all of this is so meaningful. Goal number three. Ensure racial equity throughout all county policy decisions and service delivery. So objective one, establish a Sonoma County Office of Equity and a permanent equity officer position. Objective two, establish a racial equity analyst tool for departments to use for internal decision-making, policy decisions and implementation and service delivery. And as you can see with the little icons there, there are a lot of cross sections in terms of efficiency, safety, infrastructure. This, this is where um, we see that intersection of these ideas with other pillars. Objective three, establish a regular reporting practice on racial equity in county policies, programs, and services. Okay. Let's see, we have a comment here. Um, Until we can work on why communities of color are leaving, um, in other, AKA retaining them, we shouldn't continue to try to recruit more employees of color. All right. And, um, okay. Before I go on, I wanna get your input and, and, and continue to get questions, comments, Alegria, do you have something you would like to add about this as we are? Sure. Uh, away so I just want to say that, woohoo, we already got objective one done. So let's cross <laughs> that off the list and, um, and move into objective two, which is now objective one. So this may have been an older version of our goals and objectives, but I just want you guys to know that we are making progress um, since we've, we've now <laughs> done one of these important things. And I just want to really kind of highlight the work of, um, the folks on staff uh, who have gone through this, you know, two-year process training, SoCo Real, who really were central to um, getting this pillar in the strategic planning, uh, in the strategic plan, as well as um, being able to do the work to establish the, the office and, and the position. So good news. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. All right, let's look at some questions. Uh, any part of this address housing costs for employees? I, um, I don't know if that is addressed directly in this pillar. Um, that's, a, that's a really interesting question. Um, I would say that I, you know, I think that the question of employee housing, 
um, and opportunities for employee housing, given that the county is the largest employer for the county of Sonoma, um, in the county of Sonoma. Um, this this has come up before as a as a kind of a question and an area for um, for development. I, I think and please feel free anybody who's on the who's in our um, in our panelists today. I think there's a great program that SEIU has that allows for folks who are members to apply for down payment assistance um, if they meet certain criteria. So I know that there are programs like that for county employees and. I think it's a great question, one that we should really drill down into about housing policy and housing incentives just generally for all folks, but also for county employees. Right, and that is just a great example of the kind of input that helps shape a plan like this and identify, as I was saying in the beginning, are there other objectives or ideas that um, might need to be included or considered? So thank you for that input. Here's another uh, comment. Um, please lengthen law enforcement training and prioritize non-lethal de-escalation in it. Please also provide training in how to talk to people who think differently, like autistic and mentally ill. All right, interesting comments and ha very helpful thoughts there. Um, we are gonna um, wait for a few more questions to load in, but do you have uh, any reflections on that uh, area, Alegria. Um, there was a question that came up about, you know, how the county is going to continue to engage with its commissions. And I will say that um, this is part of ongoing conversations specifically around kind of community <laughs> engagement um, and recognizing that our commissions are a really critical way that we are hearing from people um, who have been identified as leaders and appointed to bring that perspective to the county around questions of human rights and status of women. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited that when the board um, adopted, you know, or, or instituted the Office of Equity, um, one of the things that they recognized was the need to return staff support to the commissions. So the commissions right now are still sitting under kind of the Office of or the Department of Human Resources and are supported by staff from HR. Um, but know that I'm, I have already had a few meetings with folks from um, the commissions and continuing the conversations to make sure that those connections between you know, these really important institutions that sl sit slightly outside of the county, um, but are still really critical um, to really infusing you know, the information and the expertise that they bring into the inside of the county's decision-making and policy development. So thank you for that comment. Wonderful, good. Okay, well, uh, we have to move forward to our poll at this point, and uh, um, you, you'll see this popping up. We have um, the two objectives, uh, the one has already been achieved, and so in the remaining two objectives, if you can let us know what you feel is top priority out of those two, uh, that input is very helpful. So, um, Take a moment if you can and, and select one of those. I would I would say that, um, and Catherine, please feel to jump, feel free to jump in here. My understanding is that the board adopted a new policy and protocol for the ways in which significant policy revisions um, and new policy development is, is brought to the board. And one of the important revisions in that was um, kind of creating a, a check in the process and allowing for some deeper thinking on how to embed equity in these decisions. So we provided um, the county administrator's office kind of a sample tool that has been developed um, through best practices nationally with the Government Alliance on Race and Equity. Um, and there's still really important work for us to, to take that tool and take that sample and really drill down um, into making it a much more relevant tool locally for our youth. So I'm excited to let you guys know that objective one is kind of well on its way um, and yay. <laughs> a nice split, good. <laughs> good, thank you. And we have a pretty good split here, right? Between uh, just a 50-50, um, around selecting these two objectives. So really even high priority on both of those. Thank you for that. 
one more comment too I saw come in. I hope to see a dedicated objective to recentering company culture itself at all levels of, oops, something jumped here, at all levels of county government and by cultural belonging, making better career opportunities for all folks. Great, this is a really helpful comment, makes um, really, this is the stuff that enriches this conversation. Thank you for that. And we will be including that. All right, I'm gonna go to object, uh, goal four. And um, this <coughs> is engage key community and internal stakeholders in de to develop priorities and to advance racial equity. So objective one under this goal, develop a community engagement plan with a focus on racial equity and establish a process for engagement and collaboration. Objective two, collaborate with community stakeholders to incorporate a racial equity lens into county emergency response, economic recovery and resiliency planning processes. Objective three, begin implementing strategies for regular community engagement to guide racial equity efforts. All right, and we have some comments coming in, but before we turn to those, again, I just wanna open the floor. Alegria, if you have something you would like to say on this subject briefly before we see uh, what is coming from the community. Yeah, um, thank you, Talia. Th these, these um... These kind of objectives are really close to our heart at the Office of Equity. Um, I think we recognize that the ways in which the county communicates with, with folks in our community um, has been challenging, right? Um, and we have a, a very vibrant, robust, diverse, um, and, and now kind of like newly centralized um, Department of Strategic Communications, which I'm really psyched about. I think Paul Gullickson is, is on today. Um, I just really want to highlight kind of what that means for being able to pull together all of those people and all those pieces in one place is going to be meaningful, I think. And I think people will start to feel a difference. Um, and I also want to draw the distinction that there is kind of a communications piece and then there's an engagement piece. And, and one needs to be really solid in order to lead to the other, but we don't have the other at all yet. Um, and one of the things that the Office of Equity has, has recognized and started to work towards and that we saw kind of reflected in, in goal two around how do we really make sure that we are highlighting and valuing and articulating, you know, people's connectivity to their communities, people's ability to engage with their community around um, what, you know, who it is that they are, where they live, how their, how their community comes in to work with them every day, how what they understand from the community infuses the way that they deliver those services as, as public servants. Um, so we're really excited to, to really make this, you know, shift and to support um, strategic communications into community engagement and making sure that that all is grounded in a racial equity lens. All right, wonderful, thank you. Let's see, uh, a couple more questions here. What racial equity groups within the county are you planning on working with and having conversations with? Hmm. I think that's a great question. So um, I think that's a question for folks at the county to answer. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to hear, you know, what are the different groups of people? How do they identify themselves? I think we talked a little bit about SoCo Learn. So there does seem to be kind of a robust group of people that are starting to identify around um, a Latinx, uh, Chicanx, um, Afro-Latino, like population that comes in together through SoCo Learn. Um, and I know that we have a diverse uh, workforce at the County of Sonoma. And so I would love to see, you know, what other groups of employees or even individual employees that identify um, as non-white or have different identity markers that, that feel like they need a voice um, in the Office of Equity and, and, and to infuse the Office of Equity with that perspective. So you tell me, um, and, we're, and we're there to, to have that conversation with you. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have someone asking, clarify the difference between objectives one and three. Can you give us a brief clarification on, on that? Um, yeah, so I think objective one, it's, 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 you've seen it kind of through other goals as well. Objective one is the planning process or the brainstorming and the equity design process. And the later objective is the actual implementation of that, of the strategy that I've been identifying. 
Okay, thank you for that. I want to go back. There was a uh, uh, a comment. Let's see. The challenge to employing anyone, and especially those in entry level positions, is whether there will be opportunities for advancement and opportunities for their children in both schools and employment. Great comment, important to be thinking about and to keep in mind. Um, there's another comment here that I wanted to be sure to read. This is a lengthier one that says, it's so important to prioritize the preservation of county workers negotiated benefits, including pensions, by ensuring measures proposed to address budget shortfalls do not balance the budget on the backs of county workers and retirees. Renegotiating county workers benefits may be attractive in the short term, but any reduction in salary benefits, uh, et cetera, um, we can see, let's see, uh, weakens financial stability of public employees, retirees, uh, the vast majority of whom live in the community. Such, such actions would have a disproportionate impact on the entire community, uh, county, it would be far more detrimental than beneficial in the long run. Putting this principle into operation will help the county meet goals two and three in this pillar. Thank you for that comment. I'm going to um, just reserve if, you know, either it, that's, it's just a comment, it's helpful, it's part of the process and will be, you know, put in with the development of this as, as things progress. Alegria, if you have a, a thought to, on that. Um. Yeah, I, I just wanna, I wanna elevate a comment that I'm reading here um, around intersectionality. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, the, the goal, Janina, to your, to your comment, which I think is right on, right? is once you start centering equity in our conversations and our planning processes, you will see that intersectionality start to really bubble up throughout all of the ways in which the county is dealing with, you know, what's what's on our plate for, for future planning. Um, and so I, um, it, it is my vision that, you know, when we start working with Ag and Open Space and, and Regional Parks, who's really been, you know, kind of leading in this DEI work internally, um, that intersectionality has really started to ripen part of the process of, of mm -hmm. folks being able to have that conversation and to send and to center racial equity. Um, so um, keep your eyes peeled for that because I think that's going to be exciting to see. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. And there's a comment that goes with that. Someone says, "I want to see land given back to the natives, and I want to see more intersectionality for support of the trans and non-binary communities here." Great input. Thank you for that. Uh, I think that does go uh, hand in hand with this subject where, where you left off there, Alegria. Um, there's another comment here. There are many groups and individuals that have been incredibly active during the movement for black lives here in Sonoma County. I'm shocked that the people in the front lines asking for change have not been considered in this respect. Okay, any thoughts on that? Uh, Great comment. It's helpful to hear what is on your mind and what you're seeing that maybe isn't reflected here yet in this plan. Um, um, can I just elevate Lauren's question here um, around kind of social equity program for cannabis? So Lauren, um, this I think is, is a great example of how, you know, having an equity lens and having that training then goes to really underpin the development of our program within the county or within the department. Um, and so I understand that there is a, you know, a revision to the policy that's coming forward um, and that it's moving pretty quickly. Um, and so let's, let's make sure that you know, your voices around how critical it is to have equity in the middle of those policy revisions um, to, to take the time to, to build in equity into them um, is, 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 is considered in a, in a deeper way. Okay, good, thank you. A few more comments here I'm going to share. Uh, representation from all communities is key in county law enforcement agencies, but the hiring and screening process tends to have a disparate impact on employment candidates who might help address this lack of representation. Will the county bring an equity lens to these recruitments and hiring process and require these, depart these departments to justify their processes it caused such disparities and prevent better representation. And I know we do, um, we did have a look at that in one of the goal areas around 
addressing hiring processes, that sort of thing. Is there anything that um, you'd like to add to what we've covered so far in that way, Allegria? Yeah. Um, so, you know, Jerry, to your point, um, HR right now is working with the Office of Equity on a, kind of a you know, a guide um, to, to doing recruitment, hiring and retention with an equity lens um, or with an equity focus. Um, and, and with that will necessarily come kind of accountability measures. So what, what, we're, what we're looking at in kind of this in strategy, I think, is to start um, the Office of Equity really getting a good foothold in the county is to start with folks who are early adopters and folks who are excited about doing this and really showing how you can develop you know, some success um, that can be measured with implementation of new ways of doing some of this work um, so as to provide an easier path to those departments um, or agencies that may not kind of be on the same page just quite yet about the importance of equity in hiring, in recruitment, in retention. Um, so, you know, I think those two things go hand in hand and know that there's going to be some kind of early, early adopters who are going to move forward more quickly and, and that's, that's okay, that's part of the plan. And there may be folks who, who are trailing and that's okay, right? That's, that's where they're coming into the process. So, you know, in a lot of ways, equity is meeting people where they are and making sure that they have the kind of support and the kind of, um, and the kind of light shed on them to, to make sure that they, are, um, that they are all part of a larger kind of cultural shift and a larger shift in the way that the county is seeing its, its responsibility to um, communities of color, to people who are low income, to people who are differently able, to people who, are, who, have, who have been marginalized by the way that we have engaged with them. Thank you, that's wonderful. So a couple more comments and we're gonna do a poll as we get, as we draw towards the end of our time here. I do want to share uh, someone's comment. Goal four requires objectives for engaging in land back work, indigenous sovereignty and reparations. Where are those objectives or what are those plans? So this may be a, you know, a rhetorical question is it to add to the list. Where is this? We don't see it represented here. Um, I do hear in what Alegria, what you're saying is that this is unfolding and developing. Your office is certainly looking at um, um, incorporating different pieces. So I wanna give you a moment around that, but I know we're almost at time. Uh, the other qu uh, comment though was addressing crisis unfolding for our children during the COVID crisis would be nice. So also great comment, uh, didn't wanna leave that one behind. There's so many good uh, comments and ideas coming in and we just don't have time to reach everybody right now. Uh, I'm going to, but all of this will be collected, will be sent uh, as part of the report back to the Board of Supervisors. Your input will not be lost. It's part of the development of this plan. It's very important for that process. So um, I just wanna emphasize that. I wanna have a look at our poll uh, briefly here before we conclude, and I'll give you more ways to participate before we conclude. So goal four, if you can let us know your top objective out of these three, which you feel is most important, um, uh, there will be uh, um, continued ways to give your input. But for now, uh, please let us know which of these uh, objectives you would prioritize. And we do have emphasis coming in around reparations, um, the COVID crisis. So all of this will indeed go into the report that goes back to the Board of Supervisors. Your comments are anonymous and shared. So it's the best of both worlds in that way. We want to hear this information and um, um, we will be uh, sharing that all back. It's all preserved for you. So even if I wasn't able to get to it all today or answer every question fully, that will be happening. All right, let's look. It looks like objective two came out ahead with 44% uh, emphasizing collaboration with community stakeholders. 
All right, thank you so much for this input today. I wanna to go to our last slide because I do want to make sure you get a chance to see the other ways you can participate. Um, there is our uh, online survey that's open um, through December 11th. And we hope you'll take that. You can also email us any additional thoughts and questions at strategicplanning at sonomacounty.org. So we do wanna hear from you. If there's more that you feel that needs to be said, those are great ways to provide that. Um, you've all been very helpful today. Your ideas, your questions are great in final, uh, assisting the board in finalizing and understanding what work is most important uh, for the future of our county. So on behalf of the County of Sonoma, I really wanna thank you for your participation today. So thank you and goodbye. Thank you.